Welcome to the In Your Face special here on ESPN 8, The Ocho. I'm your host, Drew Peterson, along with my partners, Drew Harper and Drew Pavan. Today we have some hot topics in the world of sports. Our first topic is determining Tim Duncan's legacy with his recent retirement. I'm going to go to Drew Harper on this one. Thank you, Drew. I think that Tim Duncan should be remembered as one of the top 25 players of all time in NBA history. I think a lot of people right now are calling him better than he was. And I'm a huge fan of Tim Duncan, one of my favorite all-time players, but I don't think that he's better. There's so many players that I can list off the top of my head that to me just beat him out in terms of not only just better players from any position, but just in the big man positions alone. I'm gonna stop you there, right there. Tim Duncan, top 10. How can you not say he's not even in the top 20? He's one of the best power forwards, well not power forward, centers in his career. He's posted up numbers, five championships. He's had a great supporting cast, though, but he is definitely top 10. How could you say he's You're not? Right, and you say the supporting cast, and I think that is what has made Tim Duncan as good as he is. That supporting cast, he's had Tony Parker for most of his career, a great point guard. And now he's got the younger players. He's got Kawhi Leonard, Danny Green. He's got a great supporting cast around him, not even mentioning Greg Popovich, who's one of the great all-time NBA coaches. Like, He's had such a great cast around him that I think people are giving him more credit than he deserves in terms of being one of the greatest players. So you're saying that Michael Jordan without Scottie Pippen wouldn't have been as great? No, but Scottie Pippen wouldn't have been as great without Michael Jordan. Either way. Okay, I'm going to move on to our next topic. This is one that's very heavily debated over the media. Do you think college athletes should be paid? I'm going to go through the phone in this one. Definitely not. I like it better when they're fighting for the top. Games have been better. Games have been more clutch because they have the heart. They've had the will to win. They're one of the top teams. Everybody fights for the top. It's not like million dollar athletes who care about taking a slide once in a while. These are players diving for the end zone. Yes, but at the same time, these college athletes, think, of, think about all the big TV stations that are playing these games. Think about how much money the coaches are getting, all the sponsorships that are involved in college sports. There's so much money going through college sports, it's unbelievable, and none of that is seeing the players. And, you know, an argument for this is, you know, they're, gonna, they're all going to go pro, it's going to be okay. Less than 1% of those people are ever going to go pro. You, like, they're not, most of them are not going to be able to see a ton of money like that in their lifetimes. So I think that they should be getting paid, and not a lot, but something. They're getting paid by playing for a championship, getting their names wrote in, in the textbooks of the uh, future. They get awards, trophies, all that. Their names written in history. That is the less than 1% of college athletes that get that. A lot of them are just the supporting cast. You don't talk about, you know, the worst college players, do you? No. You talked about the great ones, and those are the ones that eventually go on the NBA. But the other ones who have the same stories as the ones who made it great and are just slightly worse, they're ending up not making any of the money. They deserve, they play better when they there is no money. They want to strive to get the money at the end of their college career. That is why they play. That's why they, it's part of a journey. The end goal of college should not be to make money. That should not be the end goal. The end goal of it should be to be able to play with the best of the best. The goal of going to the NBA should not be, oh, I'm going to now be able to make money. I'm now going to be able to support myself. So you're saying guys go all the way to the NFL. They have dreams to play in the NFL for money and stuff like that. When they stop three and a half fourths of the way, just because they, they make enough money in college, they just stop right there. Well, first of all, they're not going to make a lot of money in college. They're not going to make a lot, but they are going to make money. And so how much do you think they'll make in college? I don't know exactly, and I think it depends on the university. It depends on how much the university can afford to pay out. Universities could barely even stand up half the time than pay players. Okay, this is just a personal question. Have you seen the Alabama? Have you seen that football stadium? Yeah. It's one of the biggest football stadiums in the world. When right. the, in a few years, fine. Say that we do that, and the money and the market will be super high then. What will happen, huh? Well, college won't go dry. The colleges won't even stand alone anymore. Okay, I'm going to stop you guys there. We're going to move on to our last topic. Should the MLB All-Star Game determine home field advantage? Going to go Drew Harper on this one. No, because if you are making the, the MLB All-Star Game count for home field advantage, you are basically saying that players win championships, not teams. Because a team should be able to decide, the team should be able to prove themselves to get the home field advantage, not 
these are just individual players who are working who are working together. They're not a team. This basically is what a video game is. You play on franchise mode, you build some of the best players on your team, but they want to see it in real life. They get one game and these players get to try hard their hardest every single game and there's actually something they're trying to go for. They make it a little more interesting giving them a card to the MVP, that's what it makes it for, but it makes something more interesting. It's more serious than any other all-star game in any other sport. Yes, but there's too much on the line for it, in my opinion. I think that there's so much, because home field advantage can make or break a World Series for a team. And if you're telling me that a team should not get home field advantage because they had two players, two or three players in that okay. game. I'm going to stop you here. That's all the time we have here on In Your Face. Good night.